Right. So in the last class, we finished up to overflow overflow problem. So from now, let us begin with a new problem. We are still in chapter six. Sir, I had a question, sir, regarding last class. Can you please uh, mm -hmm. give some time? Sir, when we are dividing two hexadecimal numbers, sir. Okay, sir. So how are you how, how are you finding the uh, remainder? Oh, sorry, sorry. Use your calculator, okay? Use your calculator. Okay. I mean the way I do. So use your calculator. If you have your calculator, you can do the calculation with me uh, uh, right now. Say the number you have got, assume any number, say the number is 6B, okay? And you are dividing it by C. How much do you get as a result? Sir, I don't have the calculator with me at the moment, sir. No. All right, all right, let me show it over here, okay? So if I use my calculator, and in my calculator, if I write 6B divided by C, the answer I get is 0, 08. So definitely 0, 08 is in hexa. The next thing that I do is I multiply C with 8. That is C into 8. The result I get is 60. So this is the quotient. The next thing I do is 6B minus 60 in hexa, okay, which was my original number. Okay, so I got it. And thus I get B is the remainder. It sounds like a lot of work, but once you get used to it, it will not take much time. Maybe a few seconds. Okay. Got it. All right, so tell me what will be there in A in example 6.17? The code is given on the left hand side. So, what will be there in A? Thirty-five H. After this one, initially A there is thirty-five H, but after A N L A comma zero H, what will be there in A? Zero five ports, sir. Zero five inch. 
uh, do you want me to explain how it happened? Bit by bit and operation. Yeah, it is bit by bit and operation. Very simple, okay? But since it's the first one, so let me show it. So 35H, if you convert it into binary, you will end up getting 0011 and 0101. Over here, we have got 0FH. So 0FH is very simple. If you convert it to binary, then you will end up getting four zeros and four ones. Right? Now, if you perform AND operation, one and one is what? What is N one one? Huh? One, sir. one. One. Sir. This one is zero. This one is again one. This one is zero. And over here, all are zero. So I don't need to worry about this. All will be zero. So now this is the content of A, which you convert into hex, you get zero five H. Clear, everyone? Very simple, actually. Is it okay? Understood. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's move on to the next one. Anything over here that you want me to explain? Normally, the destination is accumulator, but you can use the RAM location or SFR, but you cannot, see, cannot use any other thing. If you want to see the uh, detailed addressing mode, like what registers can be used and whatnot, all these details you can find in uh, Appendix A1, if you want. But normally, this much information is actually enough. But if you want to see the details, you can see Appendix A1. Moving on. Can anyone tell me what is this L? I mean, what this L stands for? Any idea? The logic. Exactly, logic. So when you write L, it is logic or okay, something like that. So that's why it says L. Tell me what will be the in A. What will be the in A? Is it to see? Yeah, it is to see. Let's take another example. I actually was not supposed to show you this example. I was supposed to show you another example. The question is okay, let me take it in the next page.
right so the question is read and test port 1 to see whether it has the value 45h if it does send 99h to p2 otherwise otherwise it stays clear so what is our task our main task task is we will read the content which is being provided in port 1 if in port 1 we have 45h we will send 99h to p2 otherwise we will not do anything so let me give you the solution then let's see if i need to explain on that If there is any line in the code that you want me to explain, then you can ask me. Anything that you want me to explain. Sir, why are we giving dots after exit? I mean, you can code accordingly, whatever is given. Over here, the question says, if it does, that means if there is 45 age, then we need to send 99 age, right? But if there is, I mean, if it does not have 45 age, then nothing is written. So based on that condition, you can finish the code. I mean, it is nothing. You can write anything over here. Any other thing that you want me to explain? Sir, here, which in the jump, which value is considering, sir, for zero, being zero? Thanks. That was the question I was expecting, okay? Thanks for that. So see, this is where you need to be careful. This is again from chapter three. If you see chapter three, you will see that JNZ means jump if A is not equal to zero. All right. So JNZ and JZ means jump if A is equal to zero. So these two instructions, JNZ and JZ always checks the accumulator. Okay. So be careful about that. When you are writing this line, ZOR A comma R3, so you see that A will contain whatever you are getting from port 1 in this line. And R3 already contains 45H. Right. So if A contains 45H, that means if you are getting 45H from port 1, and if you ZOR the same values, what is the result that you get? Zero. Exactly. You end up getting zero. So in that case, your accumulator is zero. So this condition becomes false. So if this condition becomes false, sorry, if this, yeah, if this condition becomes false, then from here, you come to this line, that is you move 99 H. Otherwise, if this condition is true, from here, you directly jump in this level. Clear everyone? Any question or is it understood? Okay, so let's move on. So you see again, I'm repeating. I'm only showing you the basics, right? So there are a lot of applications of this and or ZOR, a lot of applications are there. So it is up to you to design and find out the solution of the problems that you face. Sir, I have a question, sir. Mm, sir, in the previous slide, sir, this the one? example you showed, sir. No, sir, the previous one. This one? Sir, mm. sir, is the example, sir, is OR operation or ZOR operation, sir? X. Okay, sir. ZOR operation. Okay, yeah. sir. Okay. okay, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, mm. in that slide, how did you get to see? Can you explain it? Yeah, of course I can explain, but for that you have to ask me, right? All right. Yes, sir. So you have got 54H. So convert this 54H to binary. You get 0101, 01, 
you can do this right conversion you can use your calculator no problem yes that. sir i i did those okay and 78h it will be 0 1 1 1 and 1 0 0 0 now let us simply do the zor so what is 0 0 what is the zor of 0 0 sir uh for 0 0 i will get 0 okay then again next 0 0 0 then 1 0 will be 1 and then 1 0 1 0 0 convert this to hex uh, sir i am how much do you get sir 2c so you understood how we got 2c yes sir and the side was over here that is Okay, now so complement is very simple. It will complement the contents of register A. You can use CPL as a bit instruction with any operand which is bit sized. But if you want CPL to act as a byte instruction, then it will work only on the accumulator. All right. Now let us come for compare instruction. CJ any. CJ any means compare and jump if not equal. So let me write it over here. So CJ any means compare and jump if not equal. So what will it compare? It will compare this destination and this source. These two will be compared. If they are equal, nothing will happen. But if they are not equal, then they will jump to the relative address given over here. Now there are two scenarios which can happen. That is, if they are not equal, if they are not equal, then two things can be happen. Destination can be either greater than source or destination can be less than the source. So if destination is greater than the source, then your carry flag will remain zero. And if the destination is smaller than the source, then your carry flag will become one. Just keep these things in mind for the time being. We'll see an example, then it will be clear, I believe. All right? So please keep this thing in mind, especially these two. If destination is greater than the source, 
carry flag will be zero if destination is less than the source carry flag will be one now let us see an example after that i will take your questions if you have any have you finished writing So this is your example six to four. Uh, let me write the question in brief. Okay. So assume there are five hex numbers. There are five hex numbers in RAM. The address is from fifty eight onwards. All right. So we have got five hex numbers in RAM location starting from 58 onwards. Our target will be, we will find the biggest among these five hex numbers and we will store the biggest number in 68. So the biggest number, I'm just writing the problem very briefly, okay? So the biggest number should be stored in 68. Is the question understood to all of you? So can you repeat the question again? Okay. The question is, there are five hex numbers which are stored in RAM location 58 onwards. That means in 50, okay. So let's take this rough area. So we are saying we have got five hex numbers from 58 onwards. So let's assume in 58, we have uh, 2A, then in 51H, we have got 33 all are in hex definitely. Say in 52H, we have got 0BH. 53H, we have got 56H. And in 54H, we have got uh, say 0AH. So say these are the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So these are the 5 hex numbers which are stored in RAM location 50H onwards. Our target is among these 5 numbers, we will find which one is the biggest number. And the biggest number should be stored in 68. Is the problem understood now? Yes, sir. Now let me give the solution, then I'll go line by line. Okay? Try to understand this example. Is this example there in your book? If it is there, don't you don't have to write it. 
If it is not there, you may write it. Can I start explaining? Yes, sir. So let's start. Okay. So move R zero fifty H. So very simple. What we are doing? The R zero will contain the value fifty H. Okay. Leave it like that. Why fifty H? Because we are starting from fifty H onwards. That's why you have given over here fifty H. Then in R one, we are moving the value five. Why? Because we have got five numbers. So this will act as a counter. So that's why we are moving it five. And initially we are moving zero to B. So this is our first three lines. First, second, and third line. Right. Now we are writing move a comma at the rate r not. So someone tell me what will be there in a after this line? What will be there in a? Uh, content of r not. Two a. Yeah, we can be specific. So it will be two a h. So what happens? Move a comma at the rate r zero. That means go to the address held by r zero. So the address held by r zero is fifty h. So I will go to this address held by R zero, and I will move the content of that address to the accumulator. So now A contains two A. Compare and jump A and B. So A and B are they equal? No, sir. They are not equal. So I'll jump to this loop. Okay, they are not equal. Now tell me what will be the status of carry flag after this line? After this line, what will be the status of carry flag? Sir, zero, sir. Okay, why zero? Sir, destination may be sir greater than. Exactly, it will be zero because for the time being A is greater than B, isn't it? A is containing two A H and B is containing zero, so definitely A is greater than B. So if A is greater than B, we can see from the previous slide, if destination is greater than the source, carry flag becomes zero. So C Y becomes zero. Is it clear up to this? Have you understood up to this? Yes. No. Come on. Something. I'm trying to go very slow over here. Yes, sir. All right. So now I will come over here. We will we'll jump to this loop. So we will come over here. Jump if carry to loop one. We don't have a carry, so the condition is violated. So we don't have to worry about that. Then move b comma a. So initially we had b is equal to zero, but this will be replaced by. To A because we are moving the content of A to the accumulator. Increment R not. Okay, so forget about this. Now R not becomes or R zero becomes fifty one H. So this one is done. This one is done. Decrease R one and jump if not zero. So R one was five. Now let us make it four. It is not yet zero, so we'll jump to back. That means we'll come over here. Now again move A. Comma at the rate r zero. So once again, tell me what will be there in the accumulator now? What will be there in the accumulator? Thirty three. Thirty three. Thirty three h. Right. Then compare and jump a b. So is a and b equal? No sir. Okay, no. What will be the value of the carry flag now? Tell me. Sir, one sir. Still, it will be one because your accumulator is still greater than B. So again, we'll come over here. Oh, sorry, sorry. Carry will sir. be sorry, sorry, sorry. Sir. I saw, I told you the yeah opposite one. Yeah, so carry will be sir. one. Yeah, carry will be one because your accumulator now is less than B because A contains thirty three H and as you can see, your B contains two A H. So definitely, accumulator is bigger. Sorry, 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 sorry. Accumulator is bigger or smaller? The destination, sir. Accumulator is smaller, sir. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. So accumulator is smaller than the uh, source. That means B. So A contains thirty three H, B contains two A H. So accumulator is definitely smaller. B, sir, bigger, sir, bigger. We can accumulator sorry. bigger. Sir, accumulator is bigger. Accumulator fifty one high. Sir, accumulator the... destination, sir, it is bigger, sir. No, no, no. Accumulator is contain zero. Exactly. Accumulator is containing 33 H. Your destination, yeah, B is containing 2 H. So definitely accumulator zero. is bigger. If accumulator is bigger, this is zero. Yeah. 
now it is clear all right so still same your carry will be zero accumulator is still greater than the destination or the piece b so we will move again the content of a to b so now forget about this b what will be there in b 33h right isn't it have you understood up to this yes we are in this line then we will increment r not so now r not will become 52h we will decrease r1 so now say r1 becomes 3 and we will jump over here to back Let's take one last example. Now tell me what will be there in the accumulator? Zero B. Exactly, zero B. Now when we do this line, they are still not equal. What will be the value of carry flag? One. Sir. Exactly. Now the value of carry flag will be one because your accumulator is less than B. Your accumulator contains zero B H and B contains 33H. So definitely accumulator is smaller than B. So carry becomes one. After this, we'll come to this loop. Jump if carry to loop one. So now from this line, we'll directly go to this loop one. We'll not perform these operations. So in loop one, we simply increment R1 and decrease R1 and we jump to back. So you see at the end of this code, the largest value will be stored in register B. Whatever is the largest value, finally largest value will be 56H. So that will be stored in register B. So we are moving that to the accumulator. Then from the accumulator, you are again moving to 60H. You can directly move it to 60H also, doesn't matter. So finally, your 60H will contain the value 56H. Is the example understood? Yes, sir. Um, what will happen in the case of sign numbers? Can we use the same code? I don't think so. In case of sign numbers, when you go for sign numbers, the working logic of the code or the microcontroller will be exactly same. It will depend on the programmer now how he interprets the result. Um, negative number is smaller than positive, obviously. So, in that case, uh, what should we keep inside B at the first loop? We surely cannot put zero because negative number will be less than that. So what is the largest negative number that you can have? Uh, for two bytes, it should be minus 127. 128. 128, sorry. Yeah, so you stop that because that is the smallest negative number, isn't it? Our yes, target is we'll find the biggest number. So you'll put the smallest number over there. Uh, right? Got it, got it. All right, so this was about your compare. So I hope you have understood it. Let's move forward. This actually not that difficult okay this is the only thing that you need to remember destination and source and you can always think it like this the operation performs destination minus source remember this is just for remembering okay so if you do this destination minus source and your destination is bigger than the source then definitely carry will be zero but if your destination becomes smaller than the source and if you subtract your carry will get one this is a way of remembering okay you can do this Okay, now let us go to the next topic. What about that? Okay, we have time.
Okay, ID sixty one. ID yes. Six, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Tell me what will be over here. Uh, sir, thirty six H. Over here, this one. Rotate right A. I have given you everything. Initially, you were moving thirty six H with accumulator, so the binary format is this. So after one rotate right A, what will be there in A? Tell me in the binary format. Sir, M S B will be moved to L S B, sir. So, uh, mm -hmm. um, sir, it will be zero one one zero. One one zero zero. MSB will not move to LSB, not like that. Oh, sorry, sir. Every bit will we'll be shift. shift exactly to the right ones. So now tell me, okay. what will happen, um, sir? So um, zero 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 one. Where zero 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 one then? Ah, uh, one zero one one. Yeah, one zero one one. Okay. Let me ask someone else now. Sixty-four. Sixty-four. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Tell me the next one. Ah, uh, sir, one zero 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 one one zero one. One zero 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 one one zero one. Zero one. Thank you. Yeah. All right. After that, let's ask. Seventy-three. Yes, sir. Tell me this one. Sir, zero zero. Zero zero. Think again. Sir, zero zero. Will it be zero zero? You are supposed to move, rotate left, shift every bit to the left once. Oh yeah, sir. One mm -hmm. zero. Why zero? Rotate if shift every bit to the left by one. Just one bit. Shift it to the left. This is your. This is what is there in the accumulator now. This yes, one. sir. Sir, one 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 uh, zero one zero. Ah, uh, sir, then zero one. Ah, uh, zero zero. Zero one. Zero. All right. The last one. Okay. Thank you. So let me ask it to ID zero nine. Um, yes, sir. Tell me what will be the last one. Sir, it will be one one zero zero. One one zero zero. Zero zero one one. For mm -hmm. it, sir. Sir, one one zero zero one zero zero one. One zero zero one. Yes. All right. So thank you. Anyone with any confusion? Okay. So if there is no confusion, let's move forward. This is this was actually very simple.
So shouldn't it be RLC? Hmm. Now let me ask sixteen. I did sixteen. I keep more the same. Do not keep. Let me mark it. You did not respond. Okay, it will be marked. Uh, 34. Yes, sir. Tell me this one. Uh, zero, 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 one. Zero, 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 one. Zero, zero, one, one. Zero, zero, one, one. You need another thing. What will be carry? So the carry is zero, sir. Okay. Thank you. After that, let me ask. Uh, 51. Yes, sir. This one, last one. Uh, sir, R, R, L. Mm. Sorry, R, R, C, not L. R, R, C. Cannot be R, R, L. Yeah, R, R, C. Okay, sir. Um, Insert zero. Zero. Zero, zero, then one, zero, zero, one. And what will be the value of the carry? Uh, sir, zero. Why? Uh, sir, the value of the, the carry. LSB, the LSB will go to the carry. What was the LSB? Oh, the LSB was one, sir. Sorry, sir. The carry will be one. Okay, Next is. Uh, Sixty seven. Yes, sir. Hello. I think so. Uh, sir, one, one zero. Why will it be one? You are rotating left to the carry. So if you rotate, look at the diagram. If you rotate left, what will happen? Shift every bit to the left by one. Oh, it's uh, zero, zero, one, zero. Zero, zero, one, zero. One, zero, one, zero. One, zero. One, zero, then? Sir, one, zero, one, 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 I guess. Of course, one, one. The value of carry will come to the LSP. The carry is one, right? Yes. Sir. And what will be the value of carry? So carry will be uh, zero. Exactly zero. Okay, the last one. Let me call. Sir, hmm. sir diagram ta ki sir LSB the KMSB to jabe na. Diagram ta. Thank you. Get the wrong.
Let me ask the last one and let that be 115, Rakibur Rahman. Are you there, Rakibur Rahman? See, when I call you and don't respond, that does give a negative vibe, okay? I'm Say again. I'm having some internet issues, sir. We're having some internet issues. Okay, fine. Then let's ask someone else. ID 151. 151. Are you there? 151. I have I have seen that you have unmuted yourself, so you can speak. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now, sir? Yeah, yeah, now I can hear you. So can you tell me what will be over here, the last one? I think it's uh, one, zero, zero. Mm, why will it be one? See, you shift all these bits to the left by one. So if you shift all the bits to the left, what will happen? This one will come over here. This one will come over here, isn't it? Yes, sir. So then it will start with what? It will be zero. If this zero comes zero. over, yeah, zero then. Zero one. Yeah, right. Zero, zero. Zero, no, why zero, zero? Uh, oh. Zero, one, one. zero. One. One, right. Then zero, uh, right? Zero. zero. Yeah, then. Yes. One, one, one. One, one, and the value of carry will come. What was the value of carry? You see the carry will come, right? Zero. So the value of carry was zero. And finally, this zero will go to the carry. So carry will also be zero. Have you understood? Zero. Zero. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, any question, anyone over here? Definitely not. So let's move forward.
look at the code if there is anything you want me to explain then you can ask this is just one of the examples of application of rrc whatever we saw that was just for explaining you the basics this is one of the simple applications what will happen if you want to bring in data serial right so first of all what we do we take the data in the carry flag c then we gradually use rrc so what will happen the data will gradually move into the accumulator and we repeat this for eight times because we know that the data is byte sized so if we repeat this process eight times finally the entire eight bit will be stored in the accumulator then when you execute this line you are sending it out in parallel form but you received it in serial form i hope you have understood if there is any question again you can ask so what is the difference in parallel and serial form sir the difference in parallel and serial form you see the main difference is like we are taking the data from p0.0 right so p0.0 that means over here you have got a single pin or single input port from where you are taking the data but now you are sending out from p1 right you are using the entire p1 how many ports are there in p1 eight ports exactly so you have got 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so you are using the entire eight port to send out the data have you understood sir in the input of p0 sir hmm. oh, how is how is the form of the data sir like like so, see whatever is the data you have got a single pin so say the data is something like 01001101 right so what will happen this data will come over here as like this 1101 then what you are doing from this pin you are taking each bit at a time right yes sir you are storing the entire bit in the accumulator then when you are sending move p1a the entire eight bit all these eight bits are being sent out at once using port one did you understand yes sir so this one is actually p1 more about your uh, data serialization and parallel form we will discuss some more things in i think chapter 10 most probably okay we will see over there but again we will not go very deep because this uh, serial format uh, this is not in practice anymore now so we will just see the basics okay so that you understand so, let's sir hmm. sir in hmm. this code at the starting don't we have to write move uh, yeah you are talking about p1 yeah you are talking yeah. about p1 right um, sir about uh, po the data at first uh, you are writing rrca Mm -hmm. Don't we have to put the data from P port zero to A at first? Oh no, you are taking the data from port zero, uh, port zero point zero to the carry. You see over here. No, no, for port uh, that's uh, you are taking the bit by bit to carry, right? Mm -hmm. After that, you are accumulating it, but. Uh, but uh, in the accumulator, don't we have to put uh, the input ports uh, inputs at first? Only then the RRC can be carried out, right? I did not get your question actually. Um, sir, what I am saying is that you are writing RRC A. <laughs> so for RRC to be carried out, there has to be some data in A, right? So if there is nothing in A, you can assume that there are zero bits. The by default it is zero. Okay. By default, all the registers are cleared. Okay. So if there is nothing, you can assume it to be zero. All right. Yes, sir.
Okay, so if you have any question, go through the question first, understand the problem statement, then see the solution. Then you can ask your questions. If you do not ask any question, I'll be the one who will be asking questions. Sir. Sir, what is the third line doing here? Thanks. That was the question I was expecting. Anyone who can answer, what is the third line doing over here? A N L. Anyone? What is the purpose of the line? Mm -hmm. Is it logical and? Yeah, it is logical and that all of us can see, but what is the purpose of this line? Sir, because sir, uh, the P0 receives, can receive both one and zero. So it will only take uh, the high value by being multiplied by OFH. It will only take the high value. Why do you want to take only the high value? So only it will the, make the higher nibble zero and the lower nibble exactly the value taken from both zero. Only the lower nibble is being preserved. Okay. So that means it is, it is masking, right? It is masking in such a way that the higher nibble becomes zero, the lower nibble remains as, as it is, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes. Up to this much is okay, but why are we doing this? I got one portion of the answer. There is another portion. Why are we doing this? Why we are preserving the lower nibble only? According to the question, uh, we want to take the data from P0.0 to P0.3. So exactly, only yeah. now I got both answers. Okay. So there are two things. Look at this portion first. Your useful data is only in the lower nibble. The higher nibble does not contain any useful data. Your useful data is only in the lower nibble. But in this line, you are taking the reading or you are taking input from the entire pin. Sorry, from the entire port. That means all the eight pins. So what happens, you see that we only need the reading of the lower nibble. So what we do, if we perform AND operation with zero SH, you are making the higher nibble zero and you are preserving the lower nibble. So we only have the lower nibble. Again, when you are swapping it, you see that the lower nibbles becomes zero and the higher nibble contains exactly this same data. So we only need to have the higher nibble in this way, in port one. We are only interested to send the higher nibble. But since we are sending the entire accumulator to port one, we need to make sure in port one, the lower nibble remains as zero. So that's why this line is very important. Is it understood to all of you? Any question? Okay, so it is already 3.45, perfect timing. One last thing is self-study. I have taught you a lot of things of this chapter. All you need to do is you need to teach yourself section 6.5, which is again, not that difficult at all. If you do that, that brings an end of chapter six. So I'll just take your attendance and then I'll let you leave.